Hi everyone, I'm Pear and I'm currently a senior at Burmody International School in Bangkok, Thailand, and I will be attending college at, as part of the class of 2027 at Stanford University. Uh, if you haven't watched my college decisions reaction video, you can watch that here. And thank you so much for anyone who already watched that video and came here. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about my statistics, extracurriculars. So that was what I plan on tackling in this video to hopefully provide some guidance and some of my tips and advice when I was applying to college, what I think I wish I would, I would have known. Um, a lot of these videos when I was watching them and applying to colleges were really helpful to me. So I hope that this video of mine will provide some guidance, some closure, and um, help you kind of navigate your path of applying to universities. And of course, if you have any questions, please just let me know, comment down below, or you can direct message me as well. Thank you so much. Okay, so I forgot to mention this in my intro. Uh, so I'm filming it in the evening right now, so the lighting's a bit different, but here's my background information. I am a Thai student and I currently am studying in a private international school in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, our GPA scale is out of a 4.0 and both my parents uh, studied in universities in Thailand, so I am not a legacy. Okay, so for the first part of this video, I'll be talking about my grades and the classes I took in high school. Uh, so in ninth grade, I took- I have one, 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 Uh, just for context, nine just means ninth grade level, and Mandarin three just means like I was learning book three. So at our school, we go by a semester kind of grading system. So I received all A's for both semester one, semester two for all classes. Okay, so for grade ten, I took. So I just want to preface that in 10th grade, our school allows 10th graders to take two AP courses. So I decided to take AP Physics 1 and AP World History. And then for 11th grade, I took a So um, in 11th grade, I basically took five AP classes at school and I took one outside. Um, in 10th grade, I just also wanna say that I took two AB classes at school, but then I also took one outside, uh, which I mean, I self-studied for it. And um, and here are my grades for the, the year. And as you guys can see, I received a B plus on AP Physics 2. So it's okay if you get a B, there's still a chance. Um, you don't have to stress out, it's completely okay. Your grades is not everything. It's just a benchmark for colleges to see whether you know, they, you pass a certain uh, cutoff. And if you do, um, everything else is up to you know, your, who you are, your interests, your passions, and whether you fit in to their community or not. Okay, so for 12th grade, in 12th grade, it took eight. So I took five AP courses in my senior year, and I took one kind of like accelerated course, which is called multivariable calculus, which is basically we paid for John Hopkins. Um, I'm not sure what it's called. It's like a John Hopkins program, uh, and we just bought it, paid for it, and it's like a self-paced course that I just take and do on my own um, at school. At my school, AP Calculus BC is like the, the hardest uh, math course you can take as an AP student. So in senior year, we had to take something more difficult. Uh, so we took MBC. Okay, now onto my GPA. Uh, in total, um, just counting my second semester grades in senior year, I have a 4.15 weighted GPA. And the reason is because my AP classes are weighted on a 4.5 scale. So if you get an A, you get a 4.5. Um, but I also have general classes in ninth grade, 10th grade, and I also have a general class um, in senior year as well. So it, um, my, my total GPA cannot go up to a 4.5, um, but I have a 4.15, yeah. Now I'm gonna talk about the AP tests in total that I, I took. Um, that I submitted in my Common App. So in my Common App, I said that I'll be taking 15 AP exams. Um, that includes the nine I already took and the six that I will be taking this year in May. So I took um, three AP exams in my 10th grade year, which is AP World History, AP Physics 1, which I took in high school. And then I have AP Psychology, which I self-studied. 
And then in 11th grade, I self-studied AP Macroeconomics, and then I did AP Calculus BC, AP Computer Science Principles, AP Physics 2, AP Language and Composition, and the last one is I did AP Biology. And then in 12th grade, I am taking currently five AP classes in school, but I'll be taking six AP exams because I have AP Physics C for Electricity and Magnetism and the AP Physics C Mechanics exam. And then I also have the AP Literature and Composition exam, AP Human Geography, and last is AP Chemistry. Um, for all the tests that I did, I did nine tests uh, for so far, and I received fives in all of them. Now onto my test scores, I submitted the SAT. I took the SAT twice, so the first time I received a 1490, so I received an 800 in math and a 690 in reading and writing. So the second time that I took it, I received a 1550 in one sitting, and I got a score of 770 in reading and writing, and a score of 780 in math. And so when I submitted my score, I super scored it uh, to a 1570 which means I submitted 800 in math for my first sitting and then a 770 in reading writing for my second sitting. Oh, and my first sitting, I also did an essay portion. I think I received a score of 18 on the essay portion. That was the only op opportunity I had of doing an essay because the second time around, they just canceled it. Like there was no essay anymore. So I just submitted it. Um, I submitted one SAT subject test because I took the math subject math two subject test twice. The first time I got a 780 and the second time I got an 800. And the second time I took it, that was the last like month that they ha offered the SAT subject test. So I, and I heard that it wasn't gonna be like as important anymore. So I did not study for any other subject test. I just did the math two subject test and that was the only subject test I submitted. And then onto my TOEFLs IBT, I did the TOEFL twice. I actually did not know that I had to take the TOEFLs until the summer of my senior year when I read the requirements of different schools and some of them I thought I saw that for international students you have to submit TOEFL scores. So I just went and took the TOEFLs. Um, I took it two times, like I said. The first time I received a score of 114. And then the second time I received a score of 118 out of 120. Um, so for reading, I received a 30, for listening a 30, for writing a 30, and for speaking a 28. Um, and so I submitted my second sitting score. So for TOEFLs, it's not like SATs. You can't really super score it, I believe. So I just submitted um, my 118 score because that was the best score that I had. Okay, so on to my favorite portion of this video, which are activities and extracurriculars. I just want to say that even though grades and scores are important, being able to showcase your passions and interests through your activities is so, so important as well. And of course, you have to maintain grades and kind of be able to show colleges that you can uh, do the classes that they are offering and you can pass their classes. Uh, however, it's equally as important that if you pass the certain threshold or benchmark or cutoff for your scores or academic requirements, you're able to show them, you know, your character, your personality, and why you as a person would fit in, would be a perfect fit for their school. So that's why activities are very important and they should really reflect the person that you are and the things you're interested in. Okay, so. For my activities in my common app, we have to list 10. So these are the things I listed. So the first activity that I wrote down is that I am the founder and editor-in-chief of the Uni International. Founded Thailand's first interscholastic student newspaper, 140 staff, 50 schools, 25 nationalities across 11 countries. And we also launched the Unity podcast. So yes, I wrote that and it's actually, I founded the uni newspaper in 10th grade and in the beginning it was just a school newspaper at my school but eventually after a conference we held called Raise Your Voice, uh, it kind of like brought so many different people from so many different schools and nationalities. So now we grew to over 140 people creating content and writing articles for us to break through stigmas and taboos and kind of give a space for young authors, young writers, and journalists to grow and learn and be able to have a place where they can voice their ideas and opinions. Um, so the second thing I put down, um, by the way, I put these down in order of importance to me. 
um, or order of the relevance or the time I spent in it. So I would say that the first two are very on par with each other. So I don't really know which one to put first, but um, so they're kind of equally important. So my second one, I said I was a founder and president of HER, H-E-R, which stands for Health, Equity and Respect. And it's an international feminine health and hygiene organization to fight menstrual stigma. We organize gynecological workshops, menstruation conferences, with over 20 NGO partners. Actually, currently the number is almost like almost over like 30, um, but at the time that I submitted, it was like 20, so I, that's what I said. Um, the third one is that I was I wrote that I'm the founder of Cerebell Social Enterprise, and I created research-based skincare products made from silkworm cocoon extracts. We distribute them through female social enterprise and export to three countries. So uh, Cerebell is basically a brand that I created. It's like a skincare product and basically we upcycle um, like silkworm cocoons that are discarded. We buy them from uh, kind of silk farmers in Thailand and then we turn that into skincare through extracting sericin, which is a protein that's very good for your skin and putting that in different products like cream, moisturizer, uh, serum and things like that. And we kind of offer these beauty sets to former prisoners to be able to help them um, earn income through selling these products uh, through like kind of like an affiliate program. Yeah. Okay, so the fourth thing is I, I wrote down was it's actually a sector of her, but I just wrote I just wrote about it because like her is such an important part of me and I actually wrote about her in my common app essay and so it's very personal and it's like very important to me so I just divide it into two parts so in the fourth uh the fourth activity I wrote down is I was a developer of the her sugarcane pads social enterprise so I led a social enterprise employing former inmates to make her pads from upcycled sugarcane waste I received FDA approval and distributed them in five countries so that's what I wrote um basically our pads there's two types we make reusable pads and we also make pads from sugarcane fiber so in the sugar industry um when they're making sugar uh there's always leftover sugarcane magos that's discarded and not really used for anything so we decided to upcycle that and use in creating pads and so that's what we did we received fda approval from the thai ministry of health and uh, we currently distribute them to underserved women and girls through NGOs, communities, conflicted areas, things like that. So that's very important to me, so I put that as the fourth thing, even though I already put her as the second thing, but I just wanted to more space to elaborate on that. Okay, my fifth thing that I wrote was that I was an international ally for Brooklyn Library's Cycle Alliance. So I collaborate and share Herba Gauss Pads innovation with the Cycle Alliance and homeless women in Brooklyn, New York and I spoke on News 12 about menstrual hygiene. So as you guys, you guys can see here is that the trend here is that there's three activities that uh, I already took up space and all three of them are about menstrual equity and menstrual hygiene. And that's because that's the social issue I'm most passionate about. And I really wanted to highlight that throughout my application and have that as my, you know, death. And so um, I wanted to highlight that through the different uh, positions I held and the different things I did to contribute to that social cause. Um, okay, so my sixth thing is that I am an initiator of Sarah Bell's MYS One for One campaign. So actually this was a hand sanitizer campaign that I did in ninth grade, but I actually kind of continued it until like um, the end of like my 11th grade career. I basically produced, sold, and donated 10,000 bottles of and why is hand sanitizers to lemon groups in five provinces and I followed the one-for-one -one model with donations to hospitals so basically um, when I sold every one hand sanitizer bottle I sold I donated one to hospitals and things like that and I started it in ninth grade because that was when COVID hit and I just started it then and uh, I kind of like I actually started Cerebell in 10th grade but then I just uh, kind of tied the my hand sanitizer initiative underneath Sarah Bell because that's much easier to when we do marketing promotions it can be like a CSR program under the social enterprise model I created for my skincare products 
so um, that's why I said it was it would belong to Sarah Ball even though it was started before. The next thing I wrote down was that I was a president for the National Honor Society at my school so I led a group of 50 students founded NHS's first DEI committee. So actually as a president of National Honor Society we did a lot of changes to the structure of NHS in um, this year and we piloted free pads so we piloted that with um, the student services at our school by kind of you know promoting that in different kind of classrooms and being able to put the different vending machines in in the restrooms and we helped with promoting that to students and pushing that so they don't have to be worried about bleeding on campus without having um, pads. The next activity I did, as I said, I was a pastry chef for Coco Me Kind Healthy Bakery and this is just like an online bakery I started on Instagram. I just started an Instagram page and I was like really into like the keto mode at the time. So I was like baking like keto cookies, keto bread, low carb, like super healthy snacks. And so I baked them with almond and coconut flour. I just sold them on Instagram with like, we got like 150 orders per week. Um, and the profit I just used went towards like her, cerebell and things like that. Um, I did that during the summer of my 10th grade uh, leading up to my 11th grade um, summer. And then after that, I just passed it on to NGO I was working with and just to help kind of give them the recipes and taught them how to do it so that uh, former inmates can continue doing that. Um, and lastly, I said, I talked about athletics. So I did June JV slash varsity and they wrote that I was the winger in rugby. I was the rugby winger for varsity touch rugby. So I scored tries in each game as starting winger, but then the season was cut short after tearing my left knee ACL, requiring surgery in eight weeks on crutches. So yeah, basically I tore my ACL twice. The first time I tore it in eighth grade, the second time I tore it because I was playing touch rugby. And so I wrote that in because I don't know, I just think like, even though I didn't play the whole season, it kind of shows how committed I was because I, you know, like I was playing touch rugby on a reconstructed ACL and I tore it while I was playing it. So I guess that kind of like shows that I was like really serious with the sport. So I just put that in. On to awards and honors. In the Common App, we are able to write five awards and honors on there. And so I selected the ones I feel like are most important to me and really highlighted best the work that I did. And so the first award that I wrote down was the Diana Award. I received the Diana Award in July 2020. Um, I believe it's July. And I was really touched and it's like something really meaningful to me because it was the first big award I received for my work at HER, which is a menstrual equity nonprofit organization I founded and currently running. Um, and just to kind of provide context about the Diana Award, the Diana Award on their website, it says that it is established in memory of Diana, Princess of Wales. The Diana Award is the most prestigious accolade a young person aged 9 to 25 years can receive for their social action or humanitarian work. So, yeah, I was really touched and really honored to have been one of the recipients in 2022. Okay, for my next one, um, I said that I received an honorable mention at International Philosophy Olympiad. And I also received that in 11th grade and I went to the International Philosophy Olympiad in um, May. So that was after my 11th grade AP exams. I went to Portugal for that and it was such an amazing experience. I met so many people from different countries. I learned from them. And to be honest, I was doubting myself a lot as well. I had like, I felt like imposter syndrome because I felt like people, you know, the people I met, they were so good at philosophy. They could talk about philosophers all day, every day. And for me, I was just like a bit lost and I did not know if I deserved to be there. But ultimately I was awarded 16th place out of everyone who represented their countries there. And so I received an honorable mention and I'm really grateful. Uh, and the third thing I put in was that I was top two in Thailand Philosophy Olympiad. So that was a national award I received. Um, so that was the selection. So the top two people who were selected in Thailand will then get to compete in the International Philosophy Olympiad. So since I thought, well, the, I could separate them into two categories uh, since they're two different like awards technically. So that's what I did. So the fourth thing that I put down was I was a winner of Women of the Future Awards Southeast Asia for the community service category. 
This is also an international award and I received it in 12th grade and in November 2022. Um, and I was actually the youngest winner in 17 year history of the program in UK and Southeast Asia. And it's a major, major, huge honor for me because all the finalists um, were so talented. And when I saw them, when I was shortlisted, I was already so happy and all the finalists were interviewed. And so when I was interviewed um, and then I attended the award ceremony in Singapore in November. So I'm so grateful that they saw how much passion and how much work I put into this. And I really just feel like it really showed that the work that I do, you know, is making an impact on other women's lives. For my last honor I put in was that I was first in science out of 2000 World Scholar Cup Tournament Champions at Yale University. I received that in ninth grade an international award and basically if you know what world scholars cup is is basically just a competition that a lot of high schoolers they uh they do and you basically have to go through a regional round a global round and then if you are selected you get to compete at the toc or tournament of champions held at yale university and i had the opportunity to go and really experience that and that trip to yale was actually the reason why i decided to go study in the states so that was really meaningful for me and I'm really grateful that I received this honor. I also wanted to mention the additional information section in the Common App. So you think you have additionally like 500 words that you can add anything else that you want to add to show college admissions officers, like maybe something that you weren't able to add in the other sections. And so in this additional information section, I added additional awards I received up to that point in time. So I said I received an honorable mention in Yulin Women Thailand Women's Empowerment Principles or WEBS Awards in the SME category. And I also said I received an Ear Coast Global Citizenship Award for her, the unit in Cerebell, which I was chosen by teachers, counselors, and administrators in which my school chooses one student per year. Um, and Ear Coast is just basically a network of schools um, I think in the East Asia region, uh, and since RES, my school is part of that, they give an Air Coast Global Citizenship Award to one 11th grader each year. I also said that I was working with my school administration on menstrual issues, I added menstrual disorders to my health curriculum because I worked actually worked with my health teacher at school in order to do that, and so I just mentioned that in my additional information. I also mentioned that I was the female lead in the Little Mermaid School musical. So when I submitted my apps, it was in January, but my musical was actually um, going to happen in February. So I just said that I was chosen to play Ariel in the school production and it was scheduled for February, 2023. Hi everyone. So this is just me editing the video and I just realized that I forgot to add a section about recommendation letters. And I just wanna say that recommendation letters are super important and a vital part of your application because it's the only place on your application in which you have someone else vouching for you and really saying that your words are authentic and true because throughout your application, it's really just you showing colleges and presenting yourself the way you wanna be seen by admission officers. But for recommendation letters, it's a way other people are really just verifying all the things that you're saying and the work that you do. And so it carries a lot of weight. And so I would really recommend that you choose one humanities teacher and one science teacher to really show that you have a variety of interests and that you're able to take on a multitude of different subjects. And also to build lasting relationships with your teachers at school and to just kind of update them on the things that you're doing outside the classroom have to have them get to know you better uh, and have conversations with them aside from the subject at hand in that so they know who you are as a person, not just a student in the classroom, but the work that you do outside, what you're passionate about, your interest, so that they're able to really talk about you and just find it super easy to write about you um, and present you to colleges and tell the colleges why you deserve a spot in their community and what you will bring final tips for application and for you know creating your projects and doing extracurriculars i think that the most important thing is having depth in your application not just a breadth of activities you have to have a t-shaped thing where like you know you have these are the breadth of activities you do but you might have one or two things that you're really really passionate about and that creates like your t 
Um, for me, I would say that my tea is women's rights, women's issues, and definitely menstrual equity. That's something that I'm really passionate about, breaking the silence, breaking through taboos, and I think that's what my tea is. Uh, for you, it might be something different, and I would recommend really doing something that you're passionate about, that you love, and that really sticks with you, because um, it's going to be something that you continue through uh, doing and even after right you apply and you get the, your college results you still want to do it because you're passionate about it okay I think that really wraps up my video for today I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you found it insightful I hope it brought some clarity about the application process for you and like always if you have any questions you can just leave it in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them uh, and if you have anything else you want me to do a video on, please let me know. Might be something about my university essays or just some tips and tricks on additional uh, topics. Please let me know as well. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Bye!